This video is about linear and logarithmic plots. It corresponds to section 2.3.3 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Now, the basic idea of doing plots is to convey data or functions to the reader in a way that makes it clear to them what's going on and so that they can easily interpolate or extrapolate what happens in places near where the data is. Now the problem is that visually uh, about the only thing people really understand are straight lines. If you draw a fancy curve people will interpret it as oh that's a straight line from here to here a little bit of curvature and then a straight line from here to here and if that's really what's going on that's a good re representation but if you've got something that is not really a straight line where there's curvature throughout people will misinterpret it it's particular people are particularly bad at interpreting exponential functions um, and so various plotting techniques have been developed to try to uh, modify the way we present the data so that the functions we're trying to show are indeed straight lines that people will visually understand in a way that corresponds to what's really going on. Let's take a look at uh, some functions that uh, we might have in mind here. Um, I'm doing this in GNU plot, so this is a little bit of a GNU plot script. And first things I do is set the X range and the Y range to be 1 to 1000. This is just an arbitrary range. I'm going to do some arbitrary functions here. And I have labels for my x and y axis. Normally these uh, axes should be labeled with something meaningful. Is this time? Is this voltage? Is this concentration? What is it that you're putting on this axis? Here, because I'm dealing with completely arbitrary functions that have no intrinsic meaning, there are no real units associated with these things, there's no um, interpretation associated with them, I've just labeled them x and y with arbitrary units. And then I'm going to plot each of the functions. And the functions I've got here, one of them is a constant, constant value 3. And that's going to be a very simple thing to plot in any sort of plot. It's always going to come out as a nice horizontal straight line. Constant functions look the same pretty much however you plot them. The next one is a linear function. A linear function is one that goes through 0, 0 and is a straight line. So 3x, 5x, 10x, those are all linear functions. The generalization of both the constant and the linear function is the affine function. It's basically a linear function plus a constant. And this is the standard formula for a straight line. And when I'm talking about straight lines for constants, linear functions, and affine functions, I'm talking about what happens on the usual um, case of a linear axis for both the x and the y axis. Um, for the next three functions, these are not going to be straight lines on a linear plot. One of them is a power law, where I have x raised to some power. And you can think of the constant the linear function of being x raised to a power. The constant is x raised to the zero power. And the linear function has x raised to the first power. But now I can allow uh, exponents other than 0 or 1. And then I have a multiplier in front there. So there's two parameters for a power law. Exponential function looks superficially similar, but I take a number raised to the xth power rather than x raised to a power. And so exponential functions, you see those in uh, things like, you know, the spread of a disease, or, early stages of bacterial growth, anything initially that doubles every constant amount of time, it's an exponential function. And they grow very fast, much faster than any power law. Um, incidentally, the star star here is the way in GNU plot that you write exponentiation. Because the up arrow sign, the caret, um, that you use in some uh, notations, means something different in GNU plot. It's the bitwise exclusive OR, which you'll never have any use for, but that's what they picked because they grabbed their, their um, symbols from the C programming language. Okay, the last function I have here is a logarithmic one, and it's kind of the opposite of the exponential one. I take the logarithm of x, multiply by constant, and add a constant. And the 
multiplying the logarithm by a constant is like changing the base of the logarithm. Okay, so what am I going to do with these things? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have these functions and I'm going to put them inside a script. Uh, start by setting a title for the script and then decide whether the x and y axes are going to be log scale or not log scale. So I'll either set log scale x or unset log scale x. Same thing for y. So this is a linear plot. I'm going to unset both x and y. And the next thing is to set the minor x ticks. Here I'm going to set them to default. If I was doing log scale, I would set them to 10. Okay, and then I'm going to put a key and I'll place it in a particular place on the plot just so it doesn't interfere with uh, too much of what's going on on the plot. So I may put it in different places um, in different plots. And then I'll load the functions.gnu plot that I just shown you, which had the definition of the functions in the plot command and the ranges and everything else. So let's take a look at um, what that does. Okay, so I'm going to load the linear.gnu plot and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's the linear plot. And the there's a purple line there right down near the bottom axis. That's the constant 3. It's kind of hard to see because 3 is not very different from 0 or 1 where that axis is. Um, the other straight lines we have here, the green line, the linear line, that's a nice straight line, 3x. And if you move up 100 from that, you get the affine 3x plus 100. So the three things that we expected to be straight lines here are indeed straight lines. And if we take a look at the, the power law, it sort of looks like it's almost a straight line. Some people might try and fit a straight line to that. The um, exponential, that kind of looks like it's horizontal for a while, and then it goes straight vertical, or nearly so. And so people might see this as, oh, there's two straight lines here with a knee between them. And the logarithmic one also looks kind of like two straight lines with a knee between them, but it goes up first pretty steeply, and then curves a little bit, and then runs sort of up very slowly in a, what looks like a straight line. And those straight lines are illusions. They're not really straight. And yet your eye insists on seeing them as almost straight lines. And if you try and extrapolate, well, what will happen in the next, you know, if we move over to the right or move up uh, to the next panel up on the plot, what would we see? People will extrapolate as if the last part of that was a straight line. And the result is very bad intuition about what's actually going to happen. Uh, with a real function. So let's now um, hide that plot and take a look at a different sort of plot. What happens if we um, go back here and say, let's, instead of a linear plot, do a log-log plot. Here we're going to set log scale for both x and y. We're going to set 10 minor x ticks, 10 minor y ticks, just so we get the usual sort of appearance to the uh, logarithmic scale where it marks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. All right, so let's look at that, the log log plot, and turn the plot back on. Okay, now we've got some straight lines again. The um, purple is still straight. Constant 3 is still constant 3. As I said, Constants are really also power laws, because that can be thought of as 3x to the 0. And the green line, that's still straight. Also, the linear function, 3x, is still straight. We can think of that as 3x to the first. It's still a power law. And then the new one that's straight is the power law 0.1x to the 1.7. And that's a straight line. Um, you notice it's got a greater slope than the green line or the purple line. The purple line has got a slope of 0. The green line has a slope of 1. And by 1 here, I mean 1 decade per decade. If we move up by a factor of 10 on x, we'll move up by a factor of 10 in y. So the slope on the log-log plot is 1. And the power law here, steeper slope, that slope is 1.7. We move up by a factor of 10, then or we move horizontally by a factor of 10, then we'll move up by a factor of 10 to the 1.7. And that's a straight line on uh, a log-log plot because 
movement horizontally or vertically is multiplicative. If we move over a, cons uh, a fixed distance, that's multiplying by a fixed amount. So the distance from 1 to 2 is the same as the distance from 10 to 20. And that's the same as the distance from 100 to 200, or from 50 to 100. That factor of 2 is a constant horizontal distance. It's also a constant vertical distance. So we use log-log plots when what we're interested in is the ratios of our numbers. And here, if we're interested in the ratio on both, that's what we get when we have a power law x raised to the power multiplied by a constant. The multiplying by a constant simply moves the entire line up and down. The power that we have on the power law changes the slope of the line. Okay, um, we still haven't looked at how we get the exponential and the logarithmic functions to be straight lines. Let's uh, hide this and go back to here and look at semi-log x. Now in a semi-log x, we're going to take log scale on x, but not a log scale on y. So if this, uh, the x is a log scale, we'll take uh, minor x takes 10 of them, but for minor y takes, we'll take whatever the default is. All right, so we now look at semi-log x, and let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, we've got a straight line here, but we've only got one straight line. And that straight line corresponds to a logarithmic function. We use semi-log x when we're plotting something where the y-axis should be an affine function of the logarithm of x. Now, the 100 times the natural log of x, that can be um, represented in various different ways. That multiplying by 100 is simply changing the base of the logarithm. The plus 5 is moving the whole thing up and down. Okay, none of the other ones look straight at all. They all look like curves. In fact, if you look at them, they kind of look mostly like there's a horizontal line and then a diagonal line. And again, this knee that you're seeing is an illusion. There isn't any abrupt change in behavior at any point here. It's just a factor of how we chose the axes. Um, and let's take a look particularly at the exponential there, that one, that red one, because it looks like it's you know, zero all the way out to uh, you know, 40 or 50, and then it goes almost vertical. And people will often think of exponentials as being, oh, there's a horizontal part and a vertical part, and you know, there's a change in behavior here at this threshold value. And it's an illusion. We'll look at that by switching to semi-log y. And on semi-log y, we obviously take no log scale for x, we, so we unset that. We set a log scale for y. All right, let's um, do the semi-log y plot and take a look at it. And, oh, we still have a straight line for constant 3. If you've been watching, the constant 3 has been a straight line throughout. Constants are always straight lines because they never change value. They're always just a horizontal line and whatever your scaling is on your plot. Now, the linear, that's curved now, the green line there is curved. The affine, a little bit higher, looks a little different. They don't even look parallel anymore. Um, the power law, that's curved also. The exponential, now there's a straight line. The red line there is straight. There is no knee happening around 50. The thing is just running straight up. The reason it looked so much like there was a knee there is that we were stretching out what's on here, the top part of that curve there, going from say, you know, 500 to 1000 was half of our plot. And here it's only just a tiny little piece of our plot. Um, in fact, it's about a tenth of our plot here because we've got a factor of 1000 from beginning to end, and that's about 10 factors of 2. Um, so from 500 to 1000 is only a tenth of our plot here. And if we plot it this way, where the ratios on the y-axis are what matter, not differences, um, we get nice straight lines. And exponential curves turn into nice straight lines if you do the y-axis on a logarithmic scale. Okay, so we've looked at linear, log-log, semi-log x, semi-log y. And those are the most common types of 
axis scaling that you will see. There are a few more specialized ones that you'll see very rarely. In all cases, the idea is to try to make the functions that you're plotting as much like straight lines as you can, because that's all people understand visually. And if you take that as a guiding principle for choosing your axes, you'll end up with much more interpretable, much less misleading plots. And as a guidance for that, if it's the differences that matter, use a linear scale. If it's the ratios that matter, use a logarithmic scale. And practice. That's about all there really is to choosing which of your axis scales you should have.